I've been checking out the fantastic food produced around Mildura. But this area is also full of fun experiences, as well as great food. I'm on my way to meet Nick and the playground he's built on the Murray. Oh, Nick, it is beautiful. How are How you, mate? You well? Yeah, good, thanks. The room is looking good, isn't it? Bit of water, isn't it? Yeah. Now, you and your, your business partner, you set up this place as a bit of an adventure playground. What sort of things can people do here? Like, we've based it on people who appreciate the river and people who want to experience the river. Oh, you're downplaying it. This is the ultimate man cave on the Murray. If you feel like having an adventure with your party mates, this is the place to come. But, look, the real challenge today is whether you can teach a complete amateur like me how to pull a fish out of this river. Well, I taught my wife. So I can <laughs> teach you. <laughs> I won't tell her you said that. Come on, find the boat, mate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That'd help. <laughs> the old stick fish. <laughs> so, what is it that makes a good fishing spot along the river? Nice bit of tree that's in the water. A nice deep corner, a bit of depth. First, it's up to the person. I think the fishermen, everyone who fishes in the river is different. A fish here. Head. Here we go. Really? Yeah. You better get the net, buddy. Yeah, I'll take your time. Two <laughs> oh, Ed! Oh. Ed! <laughs> Seriously, you're right. You're only showing off anyway. So, what goes through your mind when you see a fish like that slide off the hook? Oh, I need a new fishing partner. <laughs> <laughs> Might be cooking sausages at this rate, mate. <laughs> not yet, mate. Oh, you on? Yeah. Oh, I'm getting the net. I'm not missing this one. <laughs> now, that is a great-looking fish. So, if you're not familiar with yellow belly, it's also known as Australian bass, and it's a fantastic fish, very meaty. Well, that's one down. Not enough to feed everyone. We've got to keep fishing. Hold on, hold on. Bring him on. Oh, in this river, when it <laughs> rains, it pours. Got, here's the net. Where's the net? Where's the net? <laughs> Oh, come in, come in, come in. Gorgeous! <laughs> That's two. I think mean, you like soup. Yeah. All right, chowder it is. Yellow belly style. Gorgeous. Oh, Nick's out for another fish. Good luck, mate. As for me, it's time to cook. Now, the thing about a chowder, you don't actually start with a seafood. That actually happens right at the end. The very first thing we need is a whole bunch of smoky meat. I like a good double-smoked bacon because this is the heart and soul flavour of the chowder. But otherwise, you could use some chorizo. Either way, you get it in the pot with a little bit of Australian extra virgin olive oil and you need to cook until it's really nicely brown. Hard to believe that this is Australia's Murray River in winter. It's incredible, isn't it? Once it has browned, we're going to throw in some onions and about as much garlic as you can handle. It's kind of up to you, but I tend to really push the barrel on this. Eight to 12 cloves. I think you want that lovely garlicky punch to really make your chowder sing. Cooking like this over an open fire would have to be just about my favourite thing in the world as a chef. I absolutely love it. You better add some seasoning as well. Instead of just going salt and pepper, though, for this, I tend to go with some celery salt. It's got a bit more flavour. Celery seeds, dried sage, a couple of other things. When the mixture starts to stick to the bottom of the saucepan, sprinkle in a couple of tablespoons of flour, but make sure you've got your liquids on standby because they'll need to go in straight after. Equal parts of stock and milk. And then we better talk about some vegetables. Here's the thing about putting veggies into a chowder. The real trick is you don't want them to overcook. You want them lightly cooked so they've still got a bit of crunch and freshness to them. I use a fairly classic mix, you know, carrots, celery, potatoes. Put them in there, let them simmer only. A few veggies, but there's a few people over on the pontoon to feed as well, and they sound like they're having a fantastic time. I mean, this place, it's amazing. 
and we really don't want the soup to overcook. There's more than enough heat left in the saucepan to finish cooking our fish. Speaking of which, Nick has filleted it beautifully for me. I'm going to chop it into pieces. Plus, he and the boys caught a few yabbies, so I'm going to chuck it in as well. This thing when you're chopping up fish, you always find mates in the local pelicans. Amazing how they turn up, isn't it? Like I said, there's enough heat in the pot. You won't need to cook that again. You finish, pinch of cayenne pepper, splash of cream, herbs if you like. The true wild flavours of Australia's Murray River. But if I'm going to be honest, I couldn't have done this without Nick. Without him, I never would have had the fish to start with. So probably the only fair thing to do is to go and see what he and his mates reckon about this delicious yellow belly chowder. The ultimate chowder. What do you reckon? Not bad. Yeah, not yeah. bad. What do you mean not bad? I think you mean excellent. Well, actually, you'll say that after you taste it. Brilliant. Beautiful. Nick's actually a really good cook. So. He genuinely is. So when he says he likes it, it means double thumbs up. Mate, thanks much for your hospitality. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> That's so good. This is so good. Something you would try, you reckon? Definitely, definitely. This is just about the very best way to spend an afternoon here on the Murray River. I have had such an incredible time in and around Mildura. There's great food, incredible adventures. The people are pretty awesome.